Hello, welcome to LEV Toys. We're building one of the new Lego Disney princess sets today. This one is a really great one for creating your own stories. This is the Lego Disney princess Ariel and the magical spell. Ooh. And I'm pretty sure we all remember what the magical spell is. She goes to see the sea witch Ursula in her little grotto. And in this, we actually get Ursula, but not yet. We're gonna start with Ariel and Ariel gets a tiny bit of a modified look for this new reincarnation of Ariel. She still is a mermaid, she's still the same shape, but she's got a new little bikini top on. She's got little shiny pink clamshells and she's got some little flourishes down the side of her tail too. Her face looks pretty much the same, I think, and her hair is the same. Let's go and find an Ariel from a previous set and let's just compare them. So, you know, same shape, but she's got a bit of a different outfit on. So that's nice, she can mix it up a little bit. They even look, they look different on the back. The pink one's kind of like it's beaded all the way around. That's pretty cool. All right, we'll put the hair back on and we'll take the old Ariel off because she doesn't belong to this set. She can watch us build it. <laughs> and in the set is also Flounder. Ariel's good friend, just to keep her out of trouble, though I don't know that Flounder's really going to be able to succeed in keeping her out of trouble in this set because, well, Ursula is in this set too, but we're not going to build her yet because she's in bag two when we build her grotto. So first up, let's build Ariel's little cave because it is very cute. Actually, no, this isn't Ariel's cave. This is a turny bit. This is an important part for the story. So we need a couple of little clips on the side here. And the turny bit in the middle, the clips are holding big seaweedy bits. This part actually belongs to Ursula, so I don't know why we're building it now, but it's the very first part of the instructions. And it's got a spinning mermaid on it. This is where Ariel goes to be granted her legs. This is where the magic is going to happen, where she's going to be able to transform from having a tail to legs so that she can walk on the land. And on the top, we've got a little corally bit, or it could be crystal, so we can actually turn it. And the set comes with a pair of legs for her with a very, very plain looking sarong. So if we put her in here, there we are, and if we turn it, oh, see I told you it was magical, now she's got legs. <laughs> we'll leave Ariel over here enjoying her new legs, figuring out how they all work while we build her cave. So you can see there's a nice roundy entryway starting to be formed there with some nice big rock pillars going up on the side of it. A bit of green down there for some seaweed and some blue see-through parts because it is under the water. And the base plate is blue too because we're all based here on the water. All right, now we're starting to fit out the inside. So we've got a goblet and a cookie and a little seat to sit right next to there. Just a tiny little cubby area. And on here we've got, oh, this is her collection of valuable, her treasures, all the things that she finds under the sea. Keep, she's gonna, this is where she keeps them all sorted, where she stores them all. And on here, oh, look, it's a mirror with her dingle hopper on it for combing her hair. Oh, there we go, that's perfect. And there's a little clamshell so she can sit in that while she is combing her hair. Actually, she can't really sit on there. She keeps kind of sliding around. Um, well, you can just stand up for now and we'll just keep building. There's a little accessory stand here so she can, she can sit here and she can make her hair all beautiful with extra dingle hopper combing and she can have a flower in it. And now her clamshell has a proper seed in it. So of course it was missing that. That's why she couldn't sit in it properly. There. Oh, that looks really nice. There we go. Oh, and the set also comes with an actual brush. But why would she need that? She's got a perfectly good dingle hopper. Oh well, <laughs> it is attached to the mirror. We can't actually use it. All right, we need to keep working on the framework here on building up the sides of the little cave. And I like the interspersion of the green with the different colors of the gray for the rock with bits of seaweed and algae and all sorts of things growing on it. It's pretty cool. And up here on the top, we're putting some smooth parts on. So maybe there's going to be a second level to her cave. There's the front entryway. 
and it's got some little pink corally bits in it. Well, that's gorgeous. Now, what is this? Oh, look at this printed door. It's got, I assume it's a door. Actually, it doesn't open. So this window with the seahorses on it. <laughs> All right, this is pretty cool. It's got smooth part along the top and it's the opening door. It's like it's like a, a, a door of water that we can slide across so she can get into her cave. And yes, lots more smooth pieces up here as well as some jumpers. Look at that, now that's perfectly well secured in there. That's looking great. So the downstairs level is all done. Now we're up to bag number two, but we haven't finished the cave yet. Well, we'll have to see what else we've got. Oh, here comes Ursula. All right. This bottom piece here is absolutely fantastic. Check that out with all those tendrils floating and waving around behind. Here is her top black to match in and it's even laced in at the back. So it's kind of like a corsety top and she gets one of the new necklace pieces. This is really awesome. Now the necklace is supposed to be where she keeps Ariel's voice. So this is gonna be very important for our storytelling. Here's her head and her hair. And voila, look, we have the first Ursula mini doll. I think it's really cool that we're starting to integrate some of the villains into these Disney princess sets too. That makes it so much more fun to play with. And I missed the trident off the side of the cave there. So now that's on. Now we need some foliage on the front. It's more seaweed, isn't it? And it's very pretty seaweed. So that's framing the front entryway. Now, oh, now we're making a little second level, a little roofy top type thing for Ariel's cave. And over there on that hook is a very cute little feature. It's a ship's wheel and it actually spins around. So if I, which way do we put this on? Uh, like that. And then we bend down so it angles like that but I've missed out some green bits so we'll just put them on and it just fits very neatly in there now on this big wall piece watery piece we have now created a statue and behind this statue under the sea is going to be a little hiding place where flounder can rest so that's very cool. I don't know that Ariel will be able to find him in there. And of course we need a big old sunken treasure chest. And in that we're going to put some gold bullion, well, some gold coins and some jewels, a sapphire and a ruby and some five cent pieces. <laughs> they could be any coins there. That's awesome. All right. And it gets a bit of coral on the top too and a little starfish. That's very sweet. And that goes here on the front. Fantastic. Now we just need a little bit more seaweed on the top. And now if we move everybody over, we can install it on the top of Ariel's cave. That's so cute. We could use that actually as a feature piece all by itself. I've missed out the seaweed there. Now it's perfect. Now it is complete. All right, a bit more pink seaweed over there and the cave is done. All right, Ariel's cave done. Now it's time for Ursula's grotto. We should cue the slightly more creepy music, but we're not going to. <laughs> we might use some creepy music later. All right, so let's see how her grotto takes shape. It's of course a different color scheme to Ariel's cave because it's all full of darker colors because Ursula is, you know, everything is darker about her. And here in the middle, if I can get this bit on, is that this is supposed to be a display case for Ariel's voice. So the glowing orb that Ariel's voice turns into. Now, as far as I knew, Ursula kept that in her necklace, but maybe she stores it in this little globe when she wants to keep it safe. <laughs> Whatever we're gonna use it for, it looks pretty spectacular. Now we've got some very nice big thorny type pieces going up and around the side. There, they accent that frame really beautifully. And down here, we've got a mirror, which is not reflective at all. And this is Ursula's mirror, so it doesn't actually show her what she looks like, which is possibly a good thing. And it's got coral on the top. 
And now, there, she can stand there. We need a bit more furniture in here. What else is really important to the story, do you remember? It's this. Check out this printed tile. It is the contract that Ariel signs so that she can get legs and she gives Ursula her voice in exchange for her legs. So she doesn't know how badly that's all going to go. It all ends out all right in the end. And here is the little quill, the feather quill to be able to sign that with. And now we need some darker seaweed with some nice pink gems on it, just to set off the top of the grotto. There we are. And now the grotto is almost done. Oh, look at this. Ursula has got her own very bright red lipstick and she needs the potion, very important potion. And huh, I missed the little jumper piece that goes in the middle. So that's where we can display Ursula. That's where she's supposed to be standing. And there's one more piece of seaweed left at the end and I forgot to put it over here on the cave. <laughs> Silly me. All right, I think we're done. Let's have a look at it all in its entirety. So there is a lot that we can do with this. It's a big chunk of the story that we can actually play out with these pieces. So let's see. Here we go. Here's Ariel. She is swimming around. She's trying to find Flounder. Oh, Flounder. I don't know. Certain we're playing hide and seek. <laughs> I found you. Though I don't know that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Did, did, did Ariel know you were playing hide and seek? <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter now. All right, into the cave now because Ariel would like to give you a good brushing to start the day. Because you always brush your fish at the beginning of the day. It's very good for their scales, makes them shiny and bright and lovely. <laughs> and now she can stand over here. She can have a bit of an inspect of her dingle hopper and all of her treasures, but. Oh, she's, she's very concerned about something. Quick, follow her, Flounder. <gasps> she's gone to see Ursula the Sea Witch. I don't think this is a good idea. What is she thinking? Actually, I don't know. She's thinking that maybe she'd like to try some bright red lipstick. No, no, no. She actually would like some legs because she would like to go and walk on land and meet the prince. Oh, not the best of choices, but she has signed the contract. What is happening now? It's all starting to look very ominous. Oh, she's about to get her legs. Well, Ariel, you've got your legs now. Oh, Flounder, you came too late. She has already made her decision. All right, it's time to hand over your voice. Don't drink it, Ariel. Oh, it's too late. Now Ursula has your voice, your beautiful, beautiful singing voice. Well, Flounder's going to have to help you swim all the way up to the surface. I hope everything goes all right up there on the land, but at the moment it all looks pretty grim. Ursula has your voice. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Luckily, we have a bit of an idea of how the story ends, so we know it ends out okay. Please don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when new videos go up. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I love to read your comments and I'll see you again with a new video very, very soon.